who is this? This is Tubular. Hi, Tubular. That's tubular, like totally tubular. Like totally tubular. Totally tubular. Totally tubular. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about it. Okay, well, this is the same old xylophone-y link thing. Okay, but with tubes, the tubes instead of bars. Time. So they kind of, it gives them a little airier sound than a xylophone would have because, so like with those drums, the air is moving too. Right. You know, so this is like an idiophone. It's a total aerophone. idiophone era. Well, it's, yeah, more it's, of an idiophone. It is way more of an yeah. idiophone. Yeah, got it. And the fun thing about this particular one is usually these just go like long to short, low to high. Right. You know, and drummers have little ones that go like Yeah. You know, like that little like Yeah, thing. yeah. But these you can reorder these in any way you want. Oh. And okay. so you could set up complicated serial retrograde inversions and things like that. You know, you could get really all like Darmstadt on this awesome. if you wanted to. Or you can just make chords. Who is Darmstadt? Oh, Darmstadt was in like the 1950s. The post-war musicians is Stockhausen and Pierre Boulez and Luciano Berrio and like the avant-garde of, of what used to be. Yeah, we'll just wait till these fuckers fuck them and fuck it off. Because they're fucking fucked. Fucking up our shit. All right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> going on the blue for real. <laughs> okay. So Darmstadt, so, yeah. Darmstadt was a, a city in Germany, and it was where all, like once a year in the summer, all like the super cerebral composers of the super cerebral European tradition would come together and out cerebral one another, kind of. Huh. So, like, Stockhausen was there, and Pierre Boulez was there, and Luciano Berrio was there, and you know later on other people were there. But, um, right, huh? But it was really um, they were very much into this serial music. It's called serial, as in like a series. Okay. And all the music that they did for a few years was you have to use every one of the 12 notes before you can use one again. Oh. And it makes this kind of spacey sounding music. They considered it at the time to be the absolute future of music. It's sort of descended from Schoenberg and Weber, and they really loved Weber. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they were really into that. And um, so that was kind of the culture that I grew up in on the cerebral music tip. Okay. You know, I came up as a jazz musician more, mm -hmm. you know, but I listened to all that and listened to what the smart guys are doing too and like we right. knew about this, you know. Yeah. And, um, and they were absolutely domineering of intellectual music like in the 70s like when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. Like that was, you know, you had to really know how to do this kind of for anybody to think you were like smart. You know, cool, huh? Which was kind of stupid in yeah. a way. Like, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know. <laughs> and it's, it's not really, Oh, here comes another plane, but it's not really that awesome as music, mm -hmm. but we'll let this yeah. go. If I can keep this thought for my, my ADD last thread jab. It's not pretty music at all. It's very mm. harsh and very austere. Mm. And it's like, you know, and then right. like dense things of that. And uh -huh. it's, it's what people like, oh, a lot of people just would dismiss it immediately. But I know they're smart people and I read what they wrote and I like listened a lot. And um, I still don't really like very much of, of that music. Mm -hmm. But I understand why they did it is they're the ones that grew up and they saw the entire world get destroyed. Hmm. They were in Europe, and as young kids, Stockhausen was in Hitler Youth. Mm -hmm. You know, like they were just, they grew up as teenagers, like during this just horrific experience. Yeah. Like so as, as like young people, they learned that like, people will just annihilate everybody in death camps, and you know, Americans will come along and nuke whole cities and just kill 200 and 300,000 people like that. 
And so they had this horrible idea of the world, and they didn't want anything that they ever made as music to sound like fucking Beethoven or Bruckner or shit mm. ever again. Mm -hmm. Like they wanted a new world, and that was the way they thought to do it. Interesting. And I think they were a little bit maybe not that right about we all want to hear music that sounds like this. Right. You know. <laughs> like, it was more theoretical. Yeah, and they really used their brains. They were smart, like, and they were in the culture of, of that. And so they, they kind of banged that home, and that got banged into me as an impressionable. You know, when I was a teenager coming up, they were the teachers, and they were the, the domineering characters of the music world. Right. And Pierre Boulez, who, like, I love his music. Mm -hmm. To this day, he softened as time went by and mm -hmm. kind of got out of that thing. But he taught me how to hear symphonic music, basically, because he was the conductor of the New York, New York Philharmonic when I was a kid. Uh -huh. And he played lots of Bartok and Stravinsky and Webern and Debussy and like all this music that I really like. Yeah. And um, he's an amazing conductor. Mm -hmm. And you really got to hear the music when he did it. And it used to be like two bucks to go on Friday afternoon and hear the rehearsals. And I went to lots of those. And so he's a very special musical influence in my life because he really taught me how to hear music that I've grown to really love. Wow, wonderful. Have you ever thought about conducting? Um, if I did, yeah. if I did, I would, A number one, not want to do this. Uh -huh. And the thing is, is, is musicians, especially playing more freeform music like I like, you like to look at what you're doing. Right. You know? And so if I did it, I would have a little, like we could talk to each other. Like right. we'd have little earpieces and microphones and you go, hey, yeah, that's good. You know? Right. Keep okay. it that way. Like Miles Davis right. on so Bitches like Brew. He's always going, you're yeah. You're conducting, like but almost like conducting by playing. playing. Right. You're not separating yourself from the musicians. Right. And yeah. I don't think anybody would be that comfortable, least of all me. I don't like telling people what to do anyway. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that Butch Morris, a jazz musician, mm -hmm. did a thing called conduction. Hmm. And this was in the 80s in New York. And, mm -hmm. um, and what he would do, he still had hand signals and everything. And people would just improvise. And if he heard something he'd like, he'd go. And he had these little things like, this is number two, that theme. And like, when I point at you again and do this, play that again. Right. And so oh, they would actually great. kind of. Yeah, that was great. Who and Butch are like real heroes. Yeah. So like, like, 